Hello, I'm Angel Felix, and this is Data Science Learning Community. We are going to explain uh, the testing chapter from Mastering Shiny. So the purpose of this, this chapter is to, to understand how to, we can apply automated testing. Also, we can see what are the different levels of testing. We also, we see the balance, speed, fragile, and co coverage, test coverage. Uh, also, we are going to have, how we are going to use the reactive part. How we are going to test the reactive part uh, in that context, because it's not the same as testing normal functions. Purpose of automatic testing. Automatic testing is a test method we have much user in involvement during the process. They increase the robustness and reliability of the application when things happen to the team. Sometimes the, the team's grows. Or uh, the, 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 the application grows or the development team changes. So you maybe start an application, but then someone else will start maintaining the application. Or maybe you start with a simple application and then you start having more requirements. Hey, add this and add other things that when you have a successful project that's going to happen. You have one simple idea, the idea was a good idea and then they will add more things and more functionalities to that application. And that will also help us to ensure that our uh, that the change that we made in the process don't break the existing code. That also help us to avoid that bobs that we find don't uh, don't rise again. Uh, and also that the new code that we are working also what as expected. So you are reducing uh, future errors. What are the four levels of testing real uh, shiny apps? And the author recommends that you should uh, strip to the lowest possible level so you can test, uh, run the test fast and as robust as possible. So we start with non-reactive, non-reacting functions. It's like if you are trying to make some business that doesn't depend on any reactivity of the application, you should try to put it in a separate function and use it as a normal function in R and not as a reactive one. So we, we try to separate uh, as much as possible business logic from shiny logic. Then we have the server function level. Uh, in that case, we are going to validate the flow reactivity. Now, if we change this, the other things also changes. Also, we have also JavaScript by running the ad in a background browser. We're going to see this also. And also we have the ad visual by, by saving a screenshot of selected elements. Uh, and that's the more fragile one. Uh, so if we see the, the what's the basis structure of our test is we start turning our Chinese app into a package. That's the first step. Uh, then, oh, or a package you can also use a use Rhino to make you. You also need to change it in the Rhino structure, whatever. But you need to 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 have a standard structure to only to test your app. Then you will create. A, a test of, for each function. If you save your your code into R model, then you can use a, use this use test to create a, this other file. So in, in the into test test that and test model dot R. That's the file where you are going to implement the test. Create tests to share individual properties of function by defining one of more expert function in the test tab. What's the basic status? You start, oh, as dot vector to a most strip names. So you, the first 
step is arranged or given, given that we have this else, when we apply or add the function, we save the value, and at the end we accept or you apply L them. And these are the three steps that we are going to follow for every test that we are going to apply. They have the example of the load function that we saw, we have saw, we have seen before. The function takes a name, extract the extension, define is a CSV or is a TSV, and import the data using the broom package. And also, if otherwise, it will show an error using the this command from from Chinese. Then you can run, once you have your function, you can run use test load, and it will create a new load file we were talking before. Now you need to grab your test in your test dot function. So test file, a load file handles all input types. So you start creating a data frame, creating some path to save the, uh, the data frame as a CSV, as a TSV. And then you are going to load uh, one, uh, those, those save CSV and confirm if the data frame is the same as the, the one you start with. So can you load the CSV? Yes, I can load the CSV. Can you load a TSV? Yes, I can load the TSV. And otherwise, if you write a file that doesn't exist or is no part of those extensions, then you're going to raise the invalid file error. Also, test that have another way to work. You can use the, the verbs describe and if. I, I don't I haven't used it too much, but I really like the way uh, that the error arrives at the end. So you will have a more comprehensive description. Right than having just one sentence, like, oh love a uh, love file uh, should or uh, can load the CSV file. So you, you implement into the it part. What do you need to test that? And then in the other can load this um, or can have the error. So every test have its own description. If it fails, for example, I failed this one, uh, each of these, this error, the low file, the low file give an error measures for, for other types. So I know that the error is happening here. Just in the consideration that is already implemented in the test that package. Now, to run the test, we have four ways to do it. We can do it line by line in the console. And you can run the, the whole test block. So you are run, you have here, you, you would uh, run a describe level or a test that level. Also, you can use dev tools to, to test the system file you are or a specific file, you no, know, and use test to test for for testing your whole package. Once you have created your test, you want to confirm your test coverage. The first step you need to apply is to install the package. So you are developing the package, maybe you don't have it installed yet, so install local your package using DevTools. And then you will be able to, to, to run test coverage for the whole package. Here is a summary of a package I'm developing. Uh, tidy value is 97% uh, of test coverage, and I see that the validate rules function is the one that those is missing some part. Also, if you are using R Studio, you can create shortcuts, a shortcut to to run test file or test coverage or test coverage for a specific file. That's the they are not already created. You need to create them. 
if you click over here the validate rules, it will show you the summary showing line by line saying, hey, what, why are you testing? What, what is covering your test? And how many times you are running, are running this code? And it's showing red lines, what you are not using. Also, tests that have the expect equal, we have used expect equal. So you have, for example, this object and you test that the, the this value is the same to this other. So here is the the life should be in the in the left and the static value should be in the right. Your expectation. Now, but we have more functions than just test equal, but test equal is really flexible. So you you can do many things just using a uh, expect equal. So you want to run expect true, for example, you can use expect equal and make the you know the validation here in the edge part and then just put true in the other side and it will make the same thing. It's equal with the expect false, equal with expect null, expect length. Or alternative is valid to, to test in whatever way you prefer to do it. Also, we have expect name. So you, you write the names that your S value should have. Well, here you can also place the names and just pass the vector as the same. So good, uh, a, good uh, a, a big deal. But it's also important to mention that expect name also have the no order. So you, you will be able to to place in any other this and also ignore the case if you need it. So yeah, it's important you want to use those options, you use a spread name. Also, we have more relaxed functions. We have a spread set equal uh, where every value of S occur in Y and the other way around. So all values on y of course apps so you are trying to say hey both vectors both vectors are the same the only point is that they are not in the same order that's something that you can share with this spec also if you have name and vectors that are knowing all the but they should have the same value with the same name they say hey S and L have the same names. If we arrange, like change the order of Y, based, no, of S based on the names of Y, we should get the same values in the same order. So basically what he's testing is that, hey, you have two vectors, different order, same names, and same names should show the same value. All the other functions that we have is expect error. Uh, it won't fail if you show a stop or some error, any error. You also have the capacity to match based on the regular expression. So you fail and you, you are validating, hey, you should fail, you, it's showing this message. Also, we have expect warning and expect, expect message. That are really useful most of the time for normal R functions. We also have the alternative to use a sped a, a snapshot a, for UI function. If we have this function, a, a slicer, a simple slicer. And we print the, the result, we see that, yeah, it's just HTML, it's just test. And we can use expect equal to show that, yeah, we are showing the same, the same. But it makes too hard to see if the output changes. So what they they said, hey, using step is expect the snapshot. So you will be able to, to save this 
in in a armadown a markdown file markdown file if you are in your function your test function is in the test slicer of it will save in the snap slicer uh, markdown and now you will be able to see the uh, the output of the snapshot And in your, in your, for example, your snapshot changes over time and you are sure, hey, this is no error. That's something that we expect to change. You can update the snapshot using test data snapshot asset. Now let's talk about testing reactivity. The test server function was introduced in Chinese one. 0.5.0. We are now in the shiny 1.8.1. Uh, it may be possible to, to test code in server functions and model. We are needing to run any full shiny application with the following uh, characteristics. So we have the UI cannot be used for this test. It's just showing, you are just going to check the reactivity. Uh, and also, you will need to add the browser inside the test server to debug any problem. Uh, in this session, we are not going to use exactly the examples of the book, as we also find that it's useful. Uh, I, I found out that the, this example was more simple to, to work around from the Chinese documentation, so we are going to miss a little bit or uh, how we're going to, to make, show the examples. So, we on, uh, we don't have any UI. We need to understand that you define the default values or your selectors or your numeric inputs in the UI. But for this function, there is no UI. So all values start with null. So we create just a server function and, and we just apply test and pass the server and just print the output, you will see a new value. That's because yeah, we don't have any UI to reference. But if we apply set inputs method from the session, this session is just specific for this test server function. It's not the same. Session, fun, session that you see in your normal shiny functions is just used for, for testing purpose. So these methods, set inputs, is not available in the normal shiny, uh, shiny uh, server functions. And now you set to 10, but, uh, to 10, then if you print the value, now you see that the value is 10. Uh, also, we can change uh, test models. So you know that models have a little bit different syntax, but yeah, Shiny, the, the test server also know how to handle. If your model also have uh, uh, some arguments, you can change it manually using the argument, uh, the arts argument and, pa and by passing a list. For example, if we set the value from the input to one and set the multiplier to three, then the reactive, the my reactive, yeah, my reactive value should be now three. Because one times three is three. Sometimes when we are working with models, uh, the result of the model is a reactive, a reactive value. As this example, we have the data set server. So we have model and they just return a reactive with some data. How we can test this? You just need to get return. And if we place the data set so you can check hey, if, if I place set input to empty cards, Hey, the data set should be the same to empty cards. If you use iris, 
then you expect that the data set is the same by two items. And now we are passing our test. Also, it's important to understand that test server uses simulated time uh, that you uh, that you control. You need to specify that the time is wrong. Right, they are using uh, the auto computer time. This have the advantage that you have a long process, for example, two minutes to run any process. You, you won't need to wait the two minutes to run your test because uh, Shani just want to uh, say, hey, that happens and that's the current time. And you don't need to physically, uh, really expect, uh, wait for that time. But that also, give you the responsibility that you need to align. For example, if we create, create this server function that will start with zero, but as uh, invalidated later, every 0 0.1 second, yeah, 0 0.1 second, it will add one to that number. And if you try, for example, to use the system sleep, that is the base R function for waiting, you will see that the value won't increase because you are using real time, but not the simulated time. To increase the simulated time, you need to use the method elapsed. So you will start expecting that the value is start with zero, because that's the way that you start starting the server. Then you, you pass the 0 0.1 seconds, and then you will see that the value increase, then you, you pass the 300 milliseconds, and then you, you can confirm that the value is four. Using this approach, this test can complete in only one millisecond that uh, it simulates. It, this function works when you are using reactive pool, a uh, invalid later or reactive timer. If you are using any function from external package, maybe it won't work. They were they were explaining that the later function from the later package don't work. Uh, for using this test. Also, uh, when we are rendering outputs, complex outputs like H uh, plus or HTML widget, uh, we want to confirm if they can be rendered with, uh, with no errors. That's why when we are using Shiny, we really want to to, to place all the computations in one reactive and then just place the render function as simple as possible. Just because uh, we don't want to debug many things. Now that we have our reactive, we can compare. Hey, we are passing the current number of rows. We have the current number of columns and they have the correct names, right? So now, the, when you place output plot, uh, the test server, we confirm that the plot is rendering without any problem. It, and now the last method that we're going to see here is the flush react. That's basically update the reactive. Sometimes if you are using a model and you are getting some reactive as an input, so it's created outside of the scope of the server function, you will need to use this function. For example, you create a reactive value and you pass it as an argument and you try to update the reactive, uh, yeah, the the test server won't do anything. So you will need to manually say, hey, flush the react so you can update the range, update all the values related to this function.
Now let's talk about the test server limitations. As we don't rub any JavaScript or happens inside R, uh, you won't be able to interact with the update functions with any show notification, without any show model, without any insert UI, remove UI, insert tab, remove tab. So you won't you won't have many of the capacities that usually are related with changing the UI. So now we need to move to the next level. We need now to test JavaScript. The book uses the Chinese test, but now it's deprecated. It was based on the Phantom uh, JS browser. Now we can use the Chinese test too. That is based on Chrome mode package and Google Chrome or Chromium browser to reproduce the sample of the chapter. Uh, what are the limitations of this? Well, this technique is more is lower than the other because you really need to wait for all your apples to render before applying the next action. Uh, only uh, uh, you only can test the outside of the app, uh, so you can you cannot test directly your reactive. So you you are just testing. You're interacting and testing your outputs, basically. And also, uh, you can test the visual using, so you can share the visual, how your channel is looking, but testing based on a screenshot, that's the one last topic, is a little bit hard because you are expecting to have a piece of reproducible screenshot. So you your pixels, your even your app is not changing, but your your pixel are changing for that screenshot. That would make fair your your test. That's why they they ask us just to apply this test in our local computer, because you know expecting to have that reproducibility in that environment using different computers is really hard. So you should just do it and doesn't make more sense also to, for example, create a GitHub action pipeline to test that because at the end, you won't have any log explaining what's the difference. You just have to see the picture that fell. Ah, this picture fell. I need to manually go and check what changed in the picture it does an important change, or I just change one color in the UI. Also, if you are uh, the the Chinese test tool doesn't have any useful way to to deal with time. You have something that takes time to render as a CSS animation. Uh, I recommend you to use the selling neither package uh, it automatic ways for your code to work. So it's a, it's a good alternative for performing end-to-end uh, -end testing based on uh, HTML and CSS. So we have this really simple Shiny app. Uh, that's why it, it loads. Yeah. What's your name? My name is Angel. Now I have Angel here and I can reset. That's the behavior that we want with this app. What is the code of this app? To make this possible, we need to use Observe Event. Why? Because we start with the input and when we have the output that is a reading, but then we have a reset. And when we need to apply a reset, just because uh, when we Place the reset button. It will place the session and we place the value as nothing. And yep, and that's the value that we want to, to, to validate. So using the test server function, we won't be able to validate this because it changed based on JavaScript. But using the shiny test tool, we can. 
So we just need to grab uh, the shiny app into the app driver and place that in the app object. Now we can use the method set input to set, for example, hardly and get the value. Here we need to explain that we are we want to see an output. So the output is now hi hardly. Now we can click over the reset button and get this list of values. Now we can also uh, validate using this framework. So you pass again the app, update, validate that the greeting is high highly, and also you can validate that the greeting is also empty. So what what is doing here is calling a Chrome browser and making all this stuff for you. Also, they have this other example. If you have selecting Apple, it will be Apple. If you have peer, it will be peer. You select the last one that is other. You need to write orange, for example, orange. It will place orange, but you select again peer. You are expecting to see peer. Or oh, change the object here. Oh, ah, that's interesting. You start writing here. It will also. It also move. You are here in peer and you start typing by two. It will also it also move. And that's the day radium button that happens when you say, hey, when you see a change here in the test input, please move this button. And we need to use update radio buttons to make that possible. So we start with the radio button, what through your favorite. We have the list, and we have also part of the list, the test input with the other ID. We have all the choices, and basically on the list. And we say, hey, if you see or say then, uh, please, uh, if you have something in order, if you have any of that in order, because other is the test up and the test input, please update the select to other that is other is the last option. So yeah, you need to remember this too. Uh, to me, it's a little bit confusing. Like the choice, you have a choice order and also an input order. Input order is the test button. And at the end, you are going to render. If, if the fruit is other, the option is other, then you are going to render the input other that is the test here. Otherwise, you always will show the fruit. And that's the test that you want to render in the output. And we can test part of the UI using test that. So you said Apple, you expect to see Apple, if you uh, select other, you expect to see uh, orange, for example, you write other as an input. And that's okay. The problem is the functionality that when you start typing, remember you have Apple, you start having an Apple, and then you start typing orange. Yeah, the, the output the output value don't change to, to orange. Why? Because a test server cannot perform the update that we saw before. So if we use the the shiny test this is based on the uh, the old the old shiny test i need to date this before committing to, to our repo but basically here if they start typing orange then the fruit gets older and the value gets orange as we expect Now let's talk about testing visuals. And to make that possible, we are going to use the test snapshot and snapshot five function from test app. And what happened here? The 
the spell snapshot file give you the file name that the image will be uh, going to be safe. It's like, hey, I'm running this browser. Uh, now I'm picking one snapshot and I'm saving this image. And where is this image going to be saving? Inside the test that snap app. Why? Because we are using the test app uh, dot file. So app is here. And then you will have the name of your uh, screenshot. To visualize the difference in your in your shiny app, your, your screenshots, you, you need to use test that shiny a uh, snapshot review. So it will show you a shiny app and you will be able to to I think to see it side to side to see them why why they are changing. When you should write tests. You can do it before writing your code. After writing, uh, after writing your code, or and always after finding a bug. Uh, I'm trying to do the first one because using the test drive development TDD, uh, you will be able to understand better the requirements. Especially you use the describe and it function of test that. So you will press A, hey, the chat, the, the function should do this and should do that and should do the other thing around. So you, in when you are making the test first, you are making sure first that you are going to write a code that's easy to test. So when you start running your function, you will know, hey, I cannot make to the, this in this way because it will match with the way that I'm expecting to test the function. So maybe that that's in, that's in most important than even writing code in just one line, something like that. If you have already your test, it will be easier to guide the process of writing your function. And also you will ensure that the function is working as you expect. Uh, something that I usually do is to start the the function and just place declare the function empty, and then I create the test and I start running the test, uh, failing them until I pass all the tests. And here are additional resources. Here we have um I added here uh for an article. Uh, that uh, for answer that compares a uh, Chinese test two uh, versus Cypress. Chinese test two is the problem that they have is basically the snapshot. If you don't want to perform a snapshot, you can use Cypress. But for use Cypress, you will need to learn a uh, JavaScript because it's a JavaScript framework for testing. Not just shiny app for any app that you know. So yeah, it's like hey, you want to go deeper in, in creating shiny apps. Your next language will be uh, JavaScript because it will help you to have better tools to render S A S S and also test better your 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 shiny app. You see continuous integration, so you don't need to share the, the, the screenshot to make sure that your app is working as you expect. And that's it. That's the end of our chapter. Very good, very good. I like the chapter about the testing activity. Something, something new. <laughs> Yeah, no, yep. It's, it's really interesting. Yeah, to and, and, it, and it's kind of tricky, you know, yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's, it's really tricky, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it took me some time, you know, to, to really get this. But yeah, uh -huh. you have a, here a summary that can, can give you some examples to right. uh, how, how to implement this in your Chinese apps. So let me end.